We'll now turn to tables and beds, where we see a lot of changes taking place in the Ming and later. Now, starting with tables, what you're going to see is a couple of different forms, and these will be imported to the West, just under a different name. Uh, here we see the household altar, what starts as a household altar. We have drawers underneath that would be for storage of various materials, and the altar would be to the ancestral spirits uh, or other religious forms as we will see them imported into China, such as Buddhism, eventually Christianity, elements of Islam, etc. Now, the key element here is you'll notice a couple of things. First of all, it's a long, narrow table. In the West, this will be known as a council table uh, or console table, and it's usually put behind a couch today, uh, but that's where it starts. And these upturned edges are primarily aesthetic. There isn't a functional purpose to them necessarily. Uh, it's all about aesthetics, creating a graceful form. And it's one that we tend to associate with Asian tables today. Then we have the Tang Hua An, which is a lighter version of that household altar. This would be used as a table primarily. And usually you would put, for example, vases or other decorative items on it if you happen to be in an upper-class Chinese home. We also have that very classic uh, sort of wood, uh, sorry, excuse me, red finish on it, which we tend to associate with China. And part of that is an attempt to create the Huali wood that they had used in the past, and also because red is a auspicious color. And so you want things that are red in your environment. It means good fortune. These will again come into the West and again exist as uh, console tables. Moving on to beds, we have a couple of different forms. We have the ta, which isn't really a bed so much as a raised platform generally for officials. The opening there is so that people could watch what was going on. It tends to be on very low feet. This is so that everyone who would be sitting on the floor in front of the official would have a good view. This is also why we see the use of pierced screens instead of solid screens so that you can see what's going on. I have a painting in the lower right there giving you a sense of a bed similar to this or a setup similar to this in use. And it ties back to the use of screens that we saw in ancient China. Then we have the Lohan Shuang, uh, which I apologize, I'm probably mispronouncing, which is another low platform. In this case, with a table in the center. And this would allow a couple of people to share a banquet, uh, to eat food, or to meet with people as a reception piece. So you would sit there as people come in and meet with you. They would sit on the floor. The elevation gives you a sense of status. Let me point out uh, the legs on this one, while they are low, as I said, are in the elephant trunk form with a hoof foot on the bottom pointing inward. We also, again, have the pierced work along the back. This sort of very dainty, very delicate work is very common, especially when you're looking at status pieces. Because imagine if you're in a home where things are chaos, there's eight children around, you can't have nice things. This would die. Uh, this, the paneling on the back, that pierced paneling, would probably be broken. Only someone of higher status who can have a nanny and children who are kept elsewhere could keep something like this. Then we have the Jia Zi Shuang, which again, I'm probably mispronouncing, I apologize, which is sort of a bed suite. What we have is a couple of different elements. We have a large compartment, first of all, and that large compartment is so that you could entertain visitors, uh, people coming in and seeing you while you're reclining in the smaller bed compartment, which is up here. Usually there's going to be a footstool of some form. We don't see one in this example, but there would be so that you could get up onto the bed. And the whole thing is then elevated above floor level, giving you a sense of hierarchy. And you could invite certain guests up to uh, the interior suite while keeping other guests out at floor level. And in Ming 
Chinese society, we see a lot of hierarchy, which is why we're seeing a lot of these forms. It's also what later the Chinese will rebel against in uh, the first revolution, the early part of the 20th century, and then in the Maoist revolution, uh, finishing in 1949.